kids. Here's today's adventure. Have this one to uh, check out and do some some work to. Nice looking axe. Nice looking axe. I'll tell you more about it just in a minute. As soon as I get it on the bench, we'll talk about it. Tell you what the complaints are, what uh, we're going to do to it, and uh, draw a picture for you mentally until you can see it here. Hold on. Today's adventure is a 1970 Sigma guitar made by Martin. It's an... Uh, barely see down in there. Looks like DR28H. I'm assuming that means a Dreadnought guitar. Made on the uh, D28, the D28 uh, model and same scale as the D28. I used to own this guitar a long time ago, very long time ago, and I got rid of it. It was a terrible mistake. I should have kept it. I really liked it. But it's not mine anymore, but it found its way back. And uh, the complaint is fret buzz, and I'll show you why in a minute, and high action down at the 12th fret. The guy plays a lot. He's, he's really good. He plays a lot down in here, too. And the action is pretty high. I haven't taken any measurements or anything yet. Uh, we don't have to duplicate this action or setting, so I'm not even going to measure anything. I'm just going to uh, take the strings off. I'm going to level the fret, straighten the neck, make sure the neck's absolutely straight. Um, level the frets and rework them, dress them, and probably crown them, get those dents out of there. I'll show you a shot of those dents. Uh, rather than, than show you this whole uh, video of me doing all this stuff, because there's already a lot of videos of me doing it, uh, I will explain to you in steps how to redo your frets, a fret job, how to dress the frets and polish them and all that. Uh, but rather than film the whole thing, I'm just going to, uh, you know, show you clips of uh, what it takes to get that job done. Um, someone has changed this, I don't know if that's a plastic saddle or bone, it might be bone. We're going to put a tusk saddle in it, so I have to get the arch from the neck here and uh, get a saddle that has the same arch to it so we don't lose that. Um, we're going to lose it when we flatten those frets, but I've got sanding blocks. We put the arch right back in them once they're, once they're taken down. So anyway, uh, let me get the strings off and I'll show you them dents in the frets and uh, why the complaint is in fret buzzing. And I'll explain to you step by step how to fix your very own. Hang on. Gone country. Well, I haven't gone country. I like some country. I like a lot of bluegrass. That's what I mostly do. And I kind of like this shirt. Just thought I would share that with you. Okay, got the strings off, and man, those frets are worn out. They, I mean, there's plenty there to dress them. I don't, they don't look like they've ever been dressed before. I know when I had the guitar, they they hadn't been dressed, but and they were getting, you know, kind of worn down then. They're really down there now. I want to get a shot of that for you if I can. Show you what I'm talking about. They are worn clear back to the 12th fret. Yeah, I should probably, there, you can see. This is the first fret below the nut. This is the second one. Uh, I think you can see in the camera, you should be able to see just how bad they are dented. It gets worse. The ones on down are even worse than that. I don't know if you can see that or not, but they are really bad. So, I got the strings off, got a cold. I've been pretty sick again. It seems to be a thing that happens a lot with me these days. 
I get outside too much, I think, and uh, I don't know, it's just... So, um, I'm just going to explain to you in steps how I do this, and uh, instead of filming every single step of it, got the strings off. Right now, I'm going to knock the nut out of it. I'm going to get a, uh, a straight edge and adjust the truss rod. Hopefully, it still works and make this neck perfectly straight. Then I'm going to take a blue magic marker and mark, color the tops of these frets across each one of them blue. Um, and then I'm going to start to uh, take a diamond cut file, I think is what I'll use, and start cutting these frets down. Um, the blue is going to show me what's been removed. And the dents are still going to be viewable as long as there's blue, as long as they're blue. I got to cut down until I see no more blue where the dents were and I'll know that, that the dents are gone and the frets are ready for uh, dressing. So uh, that's what I'm going to do right now. I'll uh, come back to you, let you see a little bit more after I do that. We'll talk some more what the next steps are. I want to get the arch of this neck uh, before I do the final job on the frets. But anyway, right now I'm going to knock the nut out, color the frets blue all the way across each one of them, and we're going to start filing until we get rid of those horrible dents. Man, they are all the way down to the 12th, 13th fret. I see a little trace of a dent on the 14th fret even. So they're, they are worn down quite, quite badly, actually. So hang on, I'll be back with more news after this <laughs> important message. So we got the nut knocked out, got the frets colored blue. I masked off the sound hole so we don't want any shavings or anything getting down in there any more than necessary. I'm going to take a sanding uh, block and sand forward. That's why I knocked the nut out, so I can sand right into infinity. And I got the neck straight also with a straight edge and um, actually I think I'm going to use a diamond block uh, diamond block sand to sand these down level them out I checked the uh, the radius on the fretboard I couldn't get it from the saddle because somebody changed the saddle out but it's uh, a number 12 as you can see that fits like a glove just about anywhere on the neck as long as you got it centered so it's a 12 radius on the fretboard, and that tells me that I have to have a, a uh, tusk saddle with a 12 radius. This little tool right here, this is actually to measure the radius. So you stick this underneath the strings, lift it up until you, you, know, you can get the radius on the strings. But I, I, I don't have that because it's got a flat saddle in it. So I have to get a tusk saddle, to do this right, I have to get a tusk saddle that's a number 12 radius in it. And I also want a compensated one. Uh, hopefully I've got one of those already. But the next step is sanding these down, grinding these down until those dents are no longer viewable. Until there's no more blue, so to speak. So uh, that's what I'm going to do right now, and I will come back when we when the frets look a lot better and explain more. Well, it's storming outside. It's uh, really looking funky out there. The sky's turning black and it's thundering and shit. But anyway, we got the, the frets are level now, as you can see. There are no more dents. The dents are all gone. There's just a tiny. Uh, impression of one in the second and third frets but it's not a dent it's just where the dent was um, I gotta run the sanding block a number 12 sanding block over that I'll probably use about a 500 grit paper on that and that will put the radius back in the uh, the frets a number 12 we measured it remember so uh, I'll do that and then crown the frets um, or semi-crown anyway, they're completely flat right now. 
or I may just check with the owner and see how he wants it. Some people, like I say, don't, they pre prefer flat frets. I like mine, you know, a little bit of a crown, but not very much. But I'll see what he wants to do. <laughs> fretboard up man there's enough DNA on that fretboard to clone a human being <laughs> so that's what uh, we're gonna do now I'm gonna find a number 12 sanding block I'm gonna start with 500 grit paper and work that down just enough to get the arch back in those frets and then I'm gonna uh, get a crowning file and put a, see how much of a crown he wants back on them and, and crown them and then polish them so that's where we are so far, if the power stays on. And presto, we have crowned frets. I uh, went over them with a, a number 12 uh, sanding block and uh, got the arch back. And went over each fret with a crown file uh, from this side, across, filing across that way. And then I turned the guitar around and filed from this other side across this way uh, so we have a nice even uh, let me sweep that fret board off it's got a lot of shavings on it <laughs> Gotta get uh, the storms over, by the way. <laughs> you gotta get that fretboard cleaned up, man. I don't know if the camera's getting this or not. I can feel the DNA on that. that that's probably still got some of my skin on it. <laughs> it's not been cleaned for a long time. Anyway, I'm gonna get some, uh, I'm gonna oil this fretboard and clean all this goo all off of it. Um, I'll probably use uh, just uh, lemon oil is all I have down here right now. Uh, it's enough to clean it up and oil a little bit. But linseed oil is the way to go with that. But like I say, I don't have any down here. And I'm not going out in the rain to get it. So lemon oil is going to have to do the job. So anyway, I'm going to clean the fretboard up, and then I'm going to polish the frets and make them as smooth and slick as a piece of glass. Uh, so when he gets into bending those strings, he won't have a, a real rough feel there. I know a, a lot of guys call themselves luthiers that do fret jobs, and they just let the player wear the frets smooth again. But, you know, I think it, if you're going to do a fret job on one, you know, that's part of it. Polish them down to where when you bend that string, there's no scratchy feel or sound. It just goes like a piece of glass across it. Thumb's getting better, folks, by the way. Check it out. Check it out. It's, it's ready to, like, come off, man. And the sooner it does, the better, because we got some big shows coming up. Our group does. And I haven't been able to play very well with that. So it's still really sore, but anyway, that's another story. Um, oil. We need oil. I'm going to come back after I have oiled and cleaned this all up. And I'll tell you about polishing frets. Now that, my friends, is a much nicer looking fretboard. It's not finished yet. Um, i still got to polish the frets, and I'm going to put another... Uh, go over that fretboard again and clean it one more time. I took a scrubbing brush and, and uh, scrubbed it down first and then oiled it good and wiped it down two or three times and uh, the frets are crowned now. Uh, 
but I, I got to go over them again. Uh, let me get zoomed out here a little bit, and I'll explain a little better detail for you. Um, I'm going to take a, a sanding stick now. This sanding stick, you can get them from Stumac. That's where I got this one. You can get different grits of uh, belt paper on eBay. I forget the company's name. Just search for sanding stick. I think it all comes up. Anyways, I'm, uh, I've already went over them once uh, with a 500, a 600 grit belt on this. I'm going to go to uh, an 800 grit and go across each fret again. And then probably a 1200 grit, maybe 1500 for final uh, polishing. So uh, let me get the camera backed up here a little bit and get set up here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Hold on. So I've already worked my way up to 1500 grit. That's what I have on here right now. And I've got to go, I figured I'd show you this much anyway, give you an idea of what's going on. Uh, i got to go down every fret and do this with this paper belt. This is the final touch on the uh, on the frets. This is what makes the string again the fret feel like glass against glass when you bend the string. You don't want that gritty, grimy feeling that a lot of uh, fret jobs leave you with. I don't know anyone that likes that feeling. Uh, Take this time to thank all my subscribers. Man, you new guys are. Uh, every day I look at it, there's more, and I appreciate that. I do appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Thank the old guys, the old subscribers, for hanging around. Hopefully, somebody will get something from this, uh, you know, this video and all the others. Yeah, I don't know why I got rid of this guitar. I didn't really want to sell it, but. You know, somebody you know, a good friend. Well, actually, it belongs to my son right now, which is a good friend. But uh, he, I had too many guitars, man. He wanted this when he played it. He really liked the sound. It's got, it's one of the better sounding Sigmas that I've ever heard or played myself. And you'll see that as soon. You'll hear that as soon as I get it set back up in playing condition again. He uses it in uh, our group, Wolf Creek. Still have CDs for sale. If anybody wants a, a CD of our group, uh, there's a couple of videos, I think. We have a Reverb Nation account and a Facebook account. Wolf Creek, look us up. And uh, Reverb Nation, you can hear a, a, lot, a few tunes, I think four or five tunes off of our current CD. We are working on a new one now but if you hear anything you like and you want a CD drop me an inbox let me know and uh, I'll give you the information how you can receive one yeah no, that's going to work I think uh, I'm not going to put you to sleep doing this uh, Here's the tusk saddle that's going to go on it. Uh, you can get these off of eBay. I highly recommend and uh, uh, you to try one of them. You can always put your old saddle back in if you don't like it. Uh, the standard Martin tusk saddle is a, a number PQ-9110-00. Now, if you get this saddle, if it's most Martin guitars, occasionally maybe you'll find one that's you know that won't fit but most of them almost every one that number I gave you PQ-9110-00 will fit all you gotta do is take off of the bottom of it to get your string height correct 
they make them intentionally a little bit thick. So you may have to take a little bit off of the side. You want that thing to fit into that bridge as tight as possible. And you know, not real tight, but it should, it should fit in and not fall out with no strings on it. It should be fairly tight. So they make it a little bit wider than the, the uh, slot back here where the saddle sits. Man, that one there is just, it's loose, big time. But anyway, yeah, it's, uh, you may have to take a little bit off of the sides to get it to fit right, but, you know, that's, uh, they do that intentionally so you can make it fit, you know, snug. Not really tight, but tight enough, like I say, where you can uh, pick the guitar up or turn it around or whatever and the saddle doesn't just fall out. You get your best sound that way. It uh, carries the sound from the strings through this, through the, the uh, bridge and the, the soundboard, the top and all that better if it fits snugly uh, and we're going to put uh, these on it uh, if you can see that martin msp 4200s i think it's a 0 0.013 to 0 0.056 that's what i use uh, I, well actually i use a msp 7200 which is the same exact gauge uh, they have a i think like three microns of coating or something on them but they last a lot longer than these but anyway, that's what we're putting on this one, these here. Um, I would recommend uh, the 7200s over these because they last longer. But for the price, you can get these on eBay, like a whole case of them, 12 packs of them for like 40 to 45 bucks, something like that. You know, they're, they're cheap and they really sound good for a week or so. <laughs> so anyways, I'm going to... Uh, Go over the rest of these frets um, with 1500 grit sandpaper and then uh, I'll come back and uh, try to glue the nut back in and uh, polish the whole guitar up. It's uh, pretty, pretty uh, dirty like. I'll take care of all that. And anyway, I'll come back in a little bit with more exciting news. I uh, wanted to make mention I got to glue this nut back in, and a lot of people think that you got to put a half a gallon of glue on this to hold it in. You don't want to do that. Just put a, you can see where it was glued before. Just put a spot of glue in the middle. You can use wood glue. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend super glue or CA glue or anything like that. I guess you could use CA glue, but. Uh, wood glue works fine. Just put a drop, you know, in the middle, just enough to hold the nut in place so it doesn't fall out or move. And that's all you need. And that makes it easy for the next guy to knock that nut out if he has to work on it or do anything like this. Uh, you know, he's not going to mess it up or break it or mess a bunch of stuff up because it was super glued into the thing. Uh, so I've got to do that yet. Right now, I'm going uh, to the shop and I'm going to work down this tusk saddle and I've already made a video of that I think it was the last one or one before maybe so you can watch that if you want to see how I do it I just put it uh, get to the right height and leave it uh, put it in a vise take a sander and sand down to the to the sander hits the vise and I'll know it's perfectly straight then um, and like I say leave some some room for adjustment because when I come back in here you know, I, want, I don't want to get it too low. I want it to be too high. That way I can sand more off of the bottom and get that string height down to uh, specifications. So uh, that's where we are now. Um, I'll glue the nut back in and then I'll go measure this saddle with the old one and leave myself plenty of room for error because the compensated saddle, it kind of throws off your view when you look at it. I learned that the hard way. Um, so anyway, I'm going to glue the nut in, then I'm going to go and, and uh, get the measurements on this and get this thing sanded down and put strings on it and get the right string height and then check the, uh, I know I'm going to have to set the uh, relief in this neck because I loosened the truss rod to make it flat. It actually had a backward bow in it, and the strings were really high down here. 
So that's where we are now. So uh, hang on, I'll be back. Uh, should be you have strings on it when the next time you see it. Well, the tusk saddle has been cut and installed, and I put the first and fifth strings on just to get some idea where to set this uh, truss rod. It was loose. I mean, I had to loosen it completely up to get the neck to be flat because it had a back bow in it before. I don't know how long that's been that way. It's only got the first and six strings on it now and uh, got the saddle in, as you can see. It's all good. Uh, got a wax job, by the way. Got the buffed and cleaned real nice. The whole the fretboard, the whole guitar. There's a mosquito. So now I'm going to, now that I'm happy with where this is at, um, I'm going to put the rest of the strings on and check the neck relief. So I'll be back with that and show you again how to do that. Uh, tell you what, it's supposed to set at 10 thousandths. But that's what I, some people set them at 12. Uh, I like mine set at 10 thousandths. That's a relatively low. Uh, I can't remember what Martin specs are. I think maybe that might be it, but don't quote me there. Anyway, just going to put the rest of the strings on, and um, I'll come back and show you how I set the neck relief. Okay, we got all the strings on. Uh, I've already set the neck relief, but I'm going to show you again yet another time how to do that. I have a capo on the first fret. Okay, tune it up to pitch, 440 standard. Put a capo on the first fret. I got one on there already. Um, you're going to need a feeler's gauge. And I set my guitars at 10,000. So, like I say, Martin, that may be the specs, I can't remember. Uh, 12 thousandths, uh, you know, 10 thousandths or 12 thousandths usually is appropriate. So, I'm using a 10 thousandths here, feeler's gauge. So, I got a capo on the first fret. I'm going to note down here at the 17th fret. I want to check this at the 7th, 8th, and 9th fret. They're in that area. We'd like to see about 10,000. And that's perfect. It's exactly 10,000. It just goes in there without raising the string. That's the... Uh, Eighth fret. Here's the ninth. So that's ten thousandths right on the money. Put a capo on the first fret. Note the seventeenth fret and check at the seventh, eighth, and ninth fret. And it, it should go in there without shoving the string up, but it should touch the string too. Now uh, I've already checked this also. Uh, let me take a capo off. This is a quick capo. It's made by Page. It's called the Page Click. And in one click, man, you can take them off really fast. They're pretty sweet. So, we're looking for... I like my guitars at 564 on the, on the bass side. 364 on the, on the treble side at the 12th fret. That's where I like mine. Uh, this is 664 on the bass side. That's a little bit higher than mine. And one reason is because we had a an issue here at the 14th fret where the body meets uh, the neck, meets the body. There's a hump there. And from the 14th fret down, the action begins to raise really quickly because right here in this area is is sunk in. This guitar is a 1970 so you know it's old and it's been through a lot over the years. It's sunk in there but nobody you know I mean you can't even reach down there to play anyway past the 15th fret or so. Anyways um, we're setting at 664. This is being measured in playing position I might remind you which is the position it you probably will be in when it counts. 664s. That reduces down to 330 seconds. And 464s on the treble side. 
that reduces down to 1 16th. So the action is very, very close, very low and very close. I'm just measuring this at the 12th fret. That's all standard. So uh, it's a done deal. It is done. <laughs> Alright, let me uh, gather my thoughts, and uh, it's a small gathering, so don't worry, it won't take long. I don't know how long into this video we are right now, uh, but I've been working on this, it's, it's finished, and it's taken me probably close to four and a half or five hours to do this whole job. Uh, the tusk saddle is in there. Uh, the arch was already set on it, so it had a number 12 arch. It already was, like I say, if you order the right saddle, and let me give you that number again. Um, the number, if you order from GraphTech Tusk Saddles, order the PQ911000. That's PQ-9110-00. And that, that saddle will fit most Martin guitars. Uh, you know, you may have to sand away from the bottom to get your action right. And you may have to sand a wee little bit from the sides of it to make it thinner. You don't always have to do that, but you probably will. And that's uh, intentional. They do that so you can make a really tight fitting saddle into that bridge, in the bridge slot. We'll get the saddle in, installed, and the proper height for the string action. We've got the uh, neck relief set at ten thousandths. And that's all good. We leveled the frets. We dressed the frets. We crowned the frets. And then we polished the frets. And we put on new strings. And glued the nut back in. So let's, uh, let's check this thing out and see what it sounds like now. See if it was all worth the time and trouble or not. Hold on. rocks man uh, with the action down that low it's uh, unbelievably loud it's a very sensitive guitar I remember that when I owned it it's, it's one of those guitars that you just touch the top of it the soundboard anywhere and you can it mutes it you can hear it take it away from it checked every fret there's no more buzzing the buzzing is gone so uh, the owner should be quite happy with that I think he's going to love the sound of it with that tusk saddle that we installed
have it, friends. There's how uh, the way I uh, set a guitar, acoustic guitar up. That will help some of you all, hopefully, and uh, you'll be able to get something out of this video to maybe save you a few bucks and and set your own guitar up. You know, uh, inbox me if you have questions. Like I say, I'll do my best to help you all I can. Uh, but I got to hear from you first. Thanks for watching. Uh, peace to all my new subscribers and all the old ones and all the ones to come. Thank you guys so very much. I might want to make mention too, please click these ads around that you see because, uh, I, you know, I get paid a few pennies per click for those ads, but it adds up, you know, after uh, a thousand, uh, several thousand clicks, it, it really does add up. Uh, I'm not in this to make money, I just do it for fun, but I like the income too, you know. So click them, man. If you don't like them, you can just close them and exit. If you do like them, read the shit and, and uh, enjoy yourself. <laughs> Thanks for watching, folks. I uh, hope this helps. Cheers. Well, folks, you know about me mashing my thumb. Most of you do. And uh, I've decided enough is enough. God, you can say that you've seen it here. This is the end of the mashed thumb. Oh, God. Oh, man. There you go. <laughs> oh, shit. God almighty.